The weekend's just around the corner. It's time to uh, chill your champagne. One of the year's biggest society events is on Sunday, the Cartier International Polo. We'll see royals and celebrities gather at the Guards Polo Club in Windsor. The event is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year, but is the tie-up between the jeweller and the sport still a sparkling one? Joining us now, Arnaud Bombager, MD of uh, Cartier. Good to see you, Arnaud. Thanks very much indeed uh, for, for coming in. Um, why is this event so important for you? Well, first of all, it is important because we celebrate uh, this wonderful 25th anniversary, which means that we've been working with the sport of polo and sponsoring this sport for uh, a quarter of a century. Uh, it's something that grew together, we grew together, and uh, something very important for us to uh, show how this sport has developed over the years, the interest of it, and it's a wonderful way for us to uh, entertain uh, some of our clients, some of our friends, and uh, some people over the press. Um, can you actually prove that, I mean, I suppose with any, any sponsorship, it's, it's maybe hard, can you prove that it does feed back into greater sales through either brand awareness or, or, or just clients who are buying more because they've spent a day with you at the polo? Well, I, I can't tell you exactly what is the impact. I know the impact on the press side is huge. I mean, because this is, I think, a worldwide event. Uh, it's something that nobody else does and that we've been building over the years. And the success, I mean, is tremendous. So wherever in the world you can hear about this uh, Cartier International Polo Day, uh, but this is the reason why we keep it, by the way, because uh, we build it, we build the awareness of it for the past 25 years, and it does work very well. So, obviously and hopefully, there will be an impact on sales, and I hope that people, when they come to buy something for their wives or girlfriends, will remember that Cartier exists and is the king of jewelers. Of, of course, though, this you know quarter century anniversary comes in the middle of you know the worst global recession we, we've had um, since since the 30s as well how how is that impacting Cartier well it does impact I mean you know we we're not recession uh, proof I mean it there is a problem and uh, depending when you are so uh, it's true that in America or in Japan we do suffer a bit a bit more than uh, in Europe for instance and specifically in France and England and UK where sales are still quite strong. But uh, we've been you know, there for uh, 160 years, and we've been through wars, recessions, and all these things. And I think that uh, uh, our capacity of reacting and assessing the, you know, the, the situation helps us tremendously, and hopefully we'll even uh, maybe gain some market share about it. Yeah, I, I was going to talk about that because it's interesting because there, there are sort of luxury groups and there are luxury groups in the sense that those that have expanded tremendously in the last 10 years and got very big indeed. And, and you wonder whether through over, you have to be careful as a luxury brand not to over expand and not become um, too everywhere. Uh, are you at risk of damaging the brand if you, if you become too prevalent, I suppose is what well, I'm you saying. Could, you could and you could definitely damage a brand. So we, have, we are very careful about uh, our distribution, for instance, the number of stores that we have, the number of point of sales where we sell our brands, and we'd rather be more exclusive, but be at the right place. Mm. So exclusivity is definitely something that we want to remain in the luxury world. Uh, so we are careful about this, and, uh, and we, we, we do, uh, manage to uh, react accordingly to uh, this situation. This economical situation is not good for anybody, and therefore we're cautious. We're cautious about uh, uh, cut costing, about events and things like that. And at the time when we are going to do this big event, I'm telling you that there are other things that I will not do. Now, I'm sure Tom's a big Cartier um Client, so I, you, I've got a few things to ask. Um, the thing that interests me is your statement that London sales had, had held up to some degree. When we look through a lot of the economic data, uh, the, the thought that we get at the moment, London's being held up by foreign tourists coming in and spending in sterling, particularly from Europe, uh, after Euro sterling sort of narrowly avoided uh, coming to parity uh, at around December. I mean, would that bear it up? Is London being supported by foreign tourists to some degree? Well, I think that it does. A little impact, definitely, because the sterling being you know so weak uh, that made made the products quite available and more available than in other countries, specifically in Europe. Now, 
I don't think this is the only reason. I think that uh, London, by the way, is a capital that uh, always will uh, attract a lot of people, and specifically uh, in the month, in, the, in those uh, you know, uh, summer months, where you have a huge amount of tourism, specifically from the Middle have East. Have you been worried about any damage to London's spending power? You know, we've got a tax on hedge funds, the 50p mm. tax rate, the non-DOM. You know, how much has that had an impact? Have you seen any impact of those measures? How much does it worry you that you know, managers can go live anywhere in the world? Well, they can. And, and I would, it would be silly of me to say that we don't care or that uh, it doesn't have an impact. It does have an impact, you know, the number of traders that uh, mm. are used to spend a huge amount of money. But it's up to us to find some other clients and some other customers and to show that uh, the creativity and the craftsmanship that we have is strong enough that people uh, will come and spend whatever amount of money that they want to spend with us. They can, Rather, always, they can always buy Cartier in Geneva or, or Monaco, wherever they go. So. Well, first of all, but uh, you know, as long as I live here, <laughs> I'm very happy when they buy here anyway. Okay. And, uh, and you know, it does work quite well because people go back to the value and go back to the legitimacy of a brand. And in today's world, I think that the big brands like Cartier uh, will survive. Yeah, and then good to talk to you today. All the best. Uh, in, have a good day as well on Sunday with your 25th anniversary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anna Bombardier, uh, this MD of Cartier. This weekend marks the 25th anniversary of one of the world's most prestigious polo tournaments, the Cartier International. England play Argentina in Great Windsor Park tomorrow. Royal guests will be among the 30,000 people to cheer the teams on. Good evening. It's one of the highlights of the social season and today hundreds of celebrities were in Windsor to celebrate 25 years of the Cartier International Polo event. Everyone from Piers Morgan to Jerry Halliwell was there, along with many other well-known faces. But it was also an important polo match, as I found out. It's one of the most glamorous events of the year and the celebrities didn't disappoint. The celebrities come here to see and be seen. Most of them don't have a clue about polo, but here it seems the sport is secondary to the champagne. To be honest with you, I probably know more about the food in that tent than I do about a chucker, but I'm looking forward to educating myself about polo. It's never been top of my list of things to do, but I'm here today to, you know, experience a bit of the high life. Straight ahead, right, little guys. There you go. Well well it's amazing people watching. Great people watching. <laughs> I've already seen some incredibly beautiful people mm. and, some, and some horrors, <laughs> and they know who they are. <laughs> I come here every year and uh, it's a lot more fun now because I used to be, in my, um, in my days as a gossip columnist, I used to have to run around after all the celebs, which is fun in its own way, but it's much nicer to be able to just hang out. Thank you. I've been coming for the last four or five years. In fact, I met my husband here four years ago, so we come now really out of tradition. We do come and watch the polo, haven't got a clue what's going on, um, but don't those boys look fantastic? You know, I mean, the whole polo gear, you want to go home, you know, and get those kind of like knee pads on, don't you? Stomp around, go and stomp in a divot or two and all this. So. One of my favourite parts of, of coming to Cartier Polo Tournament is seeing all the girls called Tiggy. And um, I like to watch those girls called Tiggy as they drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and get themselves into a state of elevated frenzy. Fans. I wouldn't say we're fans, no. We're here more for the event than the polo. We're here for the booze. And there's certainly no shortage of free champagne and the food's not bad either. 700 guests will all sit down to a three-course meal of lobster, beef and berries in a brandy snap basket. But do the women really eat such calorific food? It's almost no calories. <laughs> Fantastic. You will, you will see empty plates coming back by the dozens, which of course that's our goal. Whether it's the food or the flowers, there's been no expense spared in any area. So it's not the place you'd expect to find money-saving expert Martin Lewis. It's quite an interesting do. There's some really fascinating people around here. And the fact, when you go in that tent in there, and you pop in into what looks like a tent in the middle of the countryside and it's got chandeliers and Anton Mossimum food. To be absolutely honest with you, you say it's not very money saving. It's a free invite, free drink, free food, free day, free ticket. This is the most money saving event I've ever been to. It could be very good value for money. Yeah, it's incredibly good value for money. I didn't have to pay. 
But of course, we can't forget about the polo. This year, it's England versus Argentina for the Coronation Cup. And being the 25th anniversary, both sides were determined to win. But it was Argentina who came out on top. One of the self-proclaimed social events of the year took place in Berkshire over the weekend. 20,000 people turned up for this year's Cartier International Polo Day in Windsor, with plenty of familiar faces. Sadly, no success for England in the all-important Coronation Cup. Argentina beat them 12-5. To be honest with you, I probably know more about the food in that tent than I do about a chucka, but I'm looking forward to educating myself about polo. It's never been top of my list of things to do, but I'm here today to, you know, experience a bit of the high life. Still to come this morning, all the celebrity glitz and glam from one of the hottest tickets of the summer, the Cartier International Polo. Uh, Mark's going to be here with all the fashion stuff. Pars. Now, the Cartier International Polo is one of the hottest tickets of the summer social calendar, as well as being one of the glitziest events of the year. So we sent along our very own fashion guru, Mr. Mark Hayes, to check out the celebrity count and also find out how they were faring in the fashion stakes. Well, it's the final social event of the summer season. It is a Cartier International Polo, and somehow I managed to bag a ticket. Now, whilst all the action is going on behind me, you know me, what I'm interested in is what the celebrities are wearing. Who's getting it right? And more importantly, who's getting it wrong? Let's take a look. Moschino. Oh, Moschino. saying it wrong. Moschino. It's, right. it's Moschino. That's okay. That's all okay. It's an amazing dress. Thank Absolutely you very much. Yeah, thank uh, have you been to the polo here before? Or I've never seen polo ever. Have you not? So I'm very excited. Is Actually, I was invited. I said to my friend the other day, I was, is that the thing with the horses? <laughs> I'm wearing McQueen, which I love. Shoulders. Yes. They're big for next season. Pads right now, yes. Yeah, and you're, and you're Which McQueen is doing very well. Who am I wearing today, <laughs> darling? Are you ready for this? This jacket? It's from H&M. Is it? A bit of high street. Baby, a bit of high street <laughs> glamour, OK? There is a credit crunch, you know. <laughs> exactly. Can I tell you something yeah. quite frightening? Yeah. Well, I think it's great, actually. I'm absolutely head to toe in Matalan. Dublin, you are looking stunning today. Thank you very Please much. tell me who you're wearing. Um, well, I'm, I'm wearing, actually, a, a Roland Murray and a bit of a uh, Jimmy Choo. I'm wearing Berardi. Berardi, you look absolutely incredible. Wait, who are the shoes by? Who are my shoes? Myla Moore. Myla Moore. Oh, you look so gorgeous. Well, thank you. I've got to keep day. my shoulders back. I'm wearing Palzoleri okay. of New Bond Street. Okay. Yeah, and if I put these on, yeah. then it's, it's, it's Tom shirt. Cruise meets Palzoleri. Aviators. Yeah. You can't well, beat the aviators. Still waiting for the sun to come out. But... I know, I know, but it will, it will happen in the end. A bit of Prada on the old handbag. <laughs> yeah. I'm noticing. And then tell me about your shoes as well. What have you got there? They're, uh... They're proud of two, I think. Aren't yes. They? Yeah. Okay, so you're straight away. <laughs> Everyone else is Christian, love your turn. So oh, no. I'm quite glad. They're I'm very proud. comfy, that's why. Well, it's looking good. You're going to be all right doing the divots in them, yeah? Yes, I will be. And you join us now, Mark. Gosh, sorry for you. You always get the good gigs. That don't was a you? good gig. Yeah, that was better than my bad. usual walking up and down Oxford Street with lots of bags. I was like, look at me. I don't know how life, I got in. Isn't it? So how do they all look? They look very smart from where it is. It, it, do you know what? There was some, there was some amazing outfits. There. there was a great mixture as well. There was lots of short dresses. There was cocktail dresses. Some very ladylike ones as well. The real problem is, what does one way to the polo? I what mean, does one? What a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think my favourite dress, probably, I think possibly my favourite dress of this year so far on any. To say, it's right? a big one. Is on Ashley Roberts from the Prissy Cat. There's a lady wearing the red dress. In the red there dress. There you go. And it was absolutely Where's it? stunning. Which designer it's an is Alexander that? McQueen. <gasps> it's got those beautiful structured shoulders that everyone's going to be wearing, including you, Ben. We're all going to wear them. Do you know what yeah. I'm loving about it? She's got red pockets. Red soles as well. She's got little pockets. Yeah. It's, 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 a dress exactly. with pockets. Genius. I know. I know. It was. Uh, a stunning, stunning dress and just beautifully cut. And I think even with someone, someone with more curves would be even better in that yes, as well. Yes, she's got so an it, amazing it figure, hasn't beautifully she? Beautifully designed. So will we see that on the high streets, do you think? I think kind we, of cut? without question, we Good. will see that kind of structure. Also, an awful lot of Christian Abitan. She was yes, in a Christian Yes, we saw Abitans. those, which are famous for having red soles. It was quite yeah? odd. As you see women walk across the field, you could see just these flips of red just all over mm. the place because there were so many. It was quite it's fascinating. It's passe now, isn't it? It is. It has. Isn't it? It's so done. It's what so about good. the fashion faux pas? Has anyone got it wrong? 
wrong? So, well, she didn't get it wrong so much. Neve Campbell, she was such a lovely, lovely girl. She was so sweet. But, um, and I, I unfortunately did say, you did oh, say. it's an amazing oh, dress. Oh, you <laughs> look beautiful. It's an amazing dress. Oh, and now. <laughs> what do you say when you're standing in front of someone? You look, um, she, uh, it was a Moschino dress. She looked quite sweet. She, she looked nice. It was the first time at the polo, so maybe next year she'll improve. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Anna Friel, I thought she looked very sweet as well. She was wearing a Berardi dress. Uh, you thought this was a bit low cut, Slight wardrobe you know, malfunction. Dress, did you say? It's a Berardi. <laughs> <laughs> without Berardi. <laughs> no, yeah, a Berardi. A no bra um, Berardi it dress. Was, um, it, I thought she looked quite amazing. Yeah. She definitely had the moat, let's put it that way. Yeah, it was, it, it was quite gorgeous. <laughs> well, it worked, but, didn't um, it? And what about yeah. Joey Halliwell? She was there, what was she wearing? It's like, it's a, a slight mishap there, a slight wardrobe malfunction. Um, we've seen a couple of pictures of her She's with her, a lace looking. dress. Yeah, and um, you, you can see She had to hoik it down a bit, didn't she? She had to hoik it down. Oh, it, well, it didn't work happens well. the best of us, doesn't it? That's the way it goes. The global recession goes on, but there are some pleasures for the rich and famous that are equally enduring, like the Cartier International Polo Tournament, one of Britain's most glamorous events of the summer. Celebrities and VIPs like the Prince of Wales, actress Neve Campbell and Spice Girl Gary Halloway gathered yesterday in Windsor Great Park right outside of London to enjoy a day of sun, well, sort of, drinks and of course polo. About 20,000 people gathered to see Argentina, the world's best polo nation, thrashing England 12 to 5 to wrest the Confederation Cup from the hands of Prince Charles himself. We spoke to Adolfo for Cambiazzo, who is to pull the watch. Basically, Diego Maradona is to football, who told us he's optimistic that the so-called sport of kings has a bright future. Football is growing, everywhere is growing. So, so as much as grow, it's better for the players, for the crowd, for, for, for everybody. You don't know how much popular it can be because it's a bit of uh, a sport, it's, it's a little bit uh, expensive. But uh, in the end, I think from the last five years, the, it's been growing a lot, so that means they're going in the right directions. Well, sort of sun, as I said. Mm, bit overcast. Now, we also caught up with Cartier's managing director in the UK, Arno Bamberger, who was equally bullish about the game, but not so much about the prospects of recovering the economy. I'm not sure that the worst is over. I just know that uh, uh, we uh, are it, like any other companies. Uh, more in some countries like in the US or Japan than uh, other countries. Now the thing is that we were maybe more ready than other companies uh, for this big recession. And Bamberger told us that Cartier is targeting China to replace the business lost in Japan and in the US. China sales are doubling every year, which is huge. I mean, you know, no other country would do that. So it's still, it's reasonably big now. But it's still, you know, uh, doubling. Uh, you'd be surprised if you go to China to see that we have already 25 stores. And when it says 25 stores, they're not boutique, they're stores, big stores. Talking of how the other half live, take a look at this. A lot of posh people having a very nice time today. England taking on Argentina, the biggest day in the polo calendar. It's the Cartier event in Windsor. Thousands of people flocking to watch the players, despite it being a little bit overcast. <laughs> One man enjoying himself was Prince Charles, whose sons William and Harry both played the sport. He was at the tournament and took time to meet the crowd, who were gathering there with huge bottles of Pims and having a jolly good time. Both sides playing for the Coronation Cup. Argentina galloped off with the title. England took on Argentina today in the biggest day in the polo calendar. The Cartier event in Windsor saw thousands of people flock to watch the players despite the overcast sky. There you go, Prince Charles, whose sons, William and Harry, both played the sport, attended the tournament, took time out to meet members of the crowd. But see, there's some ladies with some sensible shoes on. Uh, both sides playing for the Coronation Cup. Argentina galloped off with the prestigious title. Recession be damned, as the annual FA Cup for posh people, the Cartier Polo event, opened up for another celebration of canapé and champagne quaffing. Much to the dismay of some toffs, well, not proper ones, but Daily Mail readers, the 
crowd has apparently been getting a bit less elite over the years, with a few too many celebs in attendance. We wondered how many of these were regulars. I've actually um, not been to it before, so this is my first time. This is my first time being invited. Um, Carty and I have sort of uh, struck up a relationship. We do a lot of charity work for Bardstown in Ireland. So they've very kindly invited myself and my husband here today. So I've never been. It's my first time. This is our second time here. Helen, uh, Helen, my wife, uh, wears, uh, is lucky enough to be offered Cartier jewels uh, occasionally, which she, she wears, and they've invited us along. They've invited us several times. This is the only second time we've been able to be here, so really looking forward to it. Uh, I have been for the last five years. Yeah. In fact, I met my husband here four years ago. This is the first recession-era event for many years, though. So has it affected the usually opulent event at all? Uh, looking around, <laughs> I don't think it's hit this section of society very hard. Might have knocked a couple of million off their bank balance. Absolutely not. It doesn't look like it. It still looks like it's completely... Um, full and the champagne's flowing so for one day i think we can forget about recession can we we didn't specifically cut back on this event because it's something very important for us and it's part of a long-term strategy communication strategy so it would be silly all of a sudden just to drop it not much sign of the recession here is there thousands of people guzzling fine champagne and caviar my kind of recession. This is a particularly notable year for the Cartier Polo event, as it's their silver anniversary. So we wondered if any of the celebs were going to indulge in anything special to help celebrate. I will be going into the tent to warm up now and then just doing <laughs> some personal Jim Carnet yeah. on the uh, field. A small variety act. So um, just involving me and a horse. Finally, we couldn't let Nev Campbell go without asking her about those rumours of Scream 4. Well, Nev, is the Scream trilogy about to become a quartet? Yes, and we're in negotiations, and if we can see eye to eye on numbers, then I will do it. You heard it here first. Every July here in Windsor, the International Cartier Polo event takes place, drawing together a nice mixture of both celebrities and high society. It stands self-evidently as a must on both the British social and sporting calendar. It does take a little bit of time, a little bit of people and uh, organization, but since we've been doing this event for 25 years, as you could understand that we try to master it reasonably well now, and I hopefully it's not as complicated. But, you know, at Cartier we have high standards and we always want to improve. I'm about to find out about polo for the first time. Uh, I'm here for the champagne, it's a nice break from the pub. I've been at the pub for five months straight. It's starting to wear on my liver. Even if you're not interested in polo, you've never played it or whatever, as an equestrian sport and spectacle, it is absolutely terrific. And what really makes it here at the Guards Polo Club is that they have the most wonderful commentator. So it becomes a fun event as well as a very exciting, and I think this afternoon, very patriotic event too. I had not actually heard of this event until I was invited a few weeks ago and looked it up and it looked like a lot of fun and I've got friends with me, so. Yes, Cartier provide the most wonderful hospitality. It's, for me, it is the best day of the summer season. It's fun, it's relaxed, it's chic, it's exclusive, even the weather's almost okay. To be honest with you, I wish I could say I was here for the finer nuances of the chucker, but I'm actually <laughs> looking forward to the finer nuances of that tent, and what I'm told is the best lunch of the social season. Guards Polo Club, the setting for this special occasion. International Day has evolved into one of the most anticipated events in the polo calendar. 
With over 25,000 people anticipated, it was going to be a busy day. The Cartier Marquis was the center of attraction for the paparazzi, where many leading stars from the worlds of stage and screen were due to enjoy a sumptuous lunch prepared by Anton Mossiman. It's just a fantastic day out, a great social event, great for spotting the latest fashions and, and spotting who's who. All the celebrities are here, it's fantastic. Well, it's going to be an exciting game today and uh, I hope UK is going to win, by the way. Uh, but, you know, it's a strong team, Argentina and with Adolfo Cambiasso. We'll see. I mean, you know, I'm for UK. I'm an Anglophile, I live in London, so what, what else can I say? Except that it's sport and we'll never win, you know. We'll be all right, but it's going to be very exciting, I feel. Very, very exciting. We're really excited to be at Cartier today. We've come to Cartier pretty much every year for the last decade. We missed it last year because we've been working in Canada filming a new show over there. So we feel a year out of step, but we've already gone in and had a look at the tent. The tent this year is designed in-house by Cartier and all the flowers which we love are done by John Carter. It's really beautiful. So as long as the rain keeps off and as long as a thousand drunk girls called Tiggy can keep up to speed, it looks like we're gonna have a brilliant time again. Once a year, over 20,000 people descend upon the Guards Polo Club in Windsor for the prestigious Cartier Coronation Cup, the world's largest spectator polo event. For the second time, the luxury chair is invited along to find out why, after 25 years, it hasn't lost its momentum. We started uh, the Cartier International Day in 1984, which is exactly 25 years ago. It has grown so much that today you have between 25 and 30,000 people watching the game. One might expect a grinding global recession to dampen the mood at an event like this, but one look at the crowd turned out for today's match should help put any such fears to rest. One reason for this is that the audience for polo has grown dramatically over the past 10 years. The biggest step towards the mainstream coming from the Hurlingham Polo Association, who have launched their Polo in the Park scheme, which aims to bring polo to the city by hosting the World Series at Hurlingham Park in London. Alongside these efforts, clubs are emerging up and down the country that allow players unwilling or unable to stump up the cash for their own horse to rent horses on a per-game basis, allowing those who may previously have been excluded to give it a go. And in case you thought this might be a game for the boys only, it might interest you to learn that polo is the only major team sport in the world to allow women to compete alongside men at all levels. Cartier's managing director, Arno Bambage, has been keen to attract more young people to the sport and thinks that this is one reason why the event is still flourishing. Slowly but surely, we invited some young people, younger people, including some young royals, because if you remember, uh, Prince William came when he was 18 years old, and that was a coup for us, I must say. And then, you know, a lot of his friends and a lot of young people came and were happy to be here. And now, it looks like everybody wants to be here. And if there's one place at this event that everyone wants to be seen at, it's the Cartier tent. To celebrate the event's 25th year, the tent was decked out in spectacular style and lunch for 700 people was laid on by world-class chef Anton Mosiman. We've done this particular party for the last 18 years. We do other events as well, smaller ones during the year, but this is the big one. So the first course is a lobster salad with a vinaigrette and courgette, uh, courgette flour uh, stuffed with a muslin of vegetables. So nice and light, fresh herbs, beautiful first course, just perfect for the weather. The main course is a field of beef, roasted, lots of uh, summer vegetables and a good red wine sauce. The third is a brandy snack with uh, lots of berries, full of color, as I said, full of flavor. With hospitality like this, it's no surprise that a number of guests have things other than polo on their mind. They've made this into the biggest day of the summer season. You'll see some of the best polo in the world here, and people do that and they really enjoy it. But even if you don't care about the polo very much, it's a great day for a party. I've been coming here for almost 25 years and I've yet to see a horse. This is my first English polo day. I'm going to be willing on whoever the Brits are today against the, against the Argies. Is that how it works? 
With champagne flowing and the stands filling, the day hurtles towards its climax, the 25th Coronation Cup match between England and Argentina. As the riders and their assistants prepare the horses for battle and the Polo Guards Parade entertains the fans, there is just time to grab the Argentine star, Adolfo Cambioso, widely regarded as the greatest polo player in the world, to get his thoughts on the match. When you play for your country, it's always an extra motivation because you, you defend in your color, so, so it would be, would be a good game for us. At least we're going to try. England, playing in red and white, came to this game as underdogs, having been beaten by Argentina three times for the Coronation Cup in the past. And in a scrappy first half, Argentina dominated proceedings, leading five goals to two after three chuckers. But England fought back defiantly in the fourth chucker, narrowing the gap to just 5-4, with all four goals coming from England captain Luke Tomlinson. However, on the day, it was Cambioso who showed everyone why he is known as the world's best player, as he, alongside rising young Argentine star Facundo Pérez, led the Argentinian team to a thoroughly convincing 12-5 victory. On DAB Digital Radio, Digital TV, Downloads and BBC iPlayer. This is Five Live. Hello, it's 10 o'clock on Sunday the 26th of July. I'm Gabby Logan with you on Five Live until midday. Coming up between now and noon, it's one of the most glamorous events on the sporting calendar. And even in the current climate, international polo is attracting massive sponsorship. We'll ask how luxury brands are coping with the downturn. Talking of luxury, comedian Lucy Porter is going to teach us all about gold. We've got new music from the King Blues and Golden Oldies from 60s musical Dreamboats and Petticoats. And in News vs Sport, Doctor Who squares up to Rebecca Abington. Figures out on Friday show that the economy has contracted 5.6% year on year, the largest slowdown since records began in 1955. So in these harsh economic times, what's the best way to keep customers buying your brand? Well, if you're a supermarket, probably cutting prices. If you're a car manufacturer, maybe offering free insurance. But if you're a luxury jeweller, the plan seems to be throwing a million quid at sponsoring a polo match. But does it make economic sense? I'm joined by the managing director of Cartier, Arnaud Bamberger. Uh, hello, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, how much of an effect has the economic downturn had on Cartier? Well... Like uh, for any company, I mean, we have to be extremely cautious because there's less spending altogether. But I do feel that uh, brands like ours, who have uh, uh, such a DNA and an history and a legitimacy, uh, maybe would be less hit than others, Sp specifically the maybe the fashion or the bling-bling ones. Right, OK, so if, you're, if you have tradition, you think you stand up better than people who've kind of come to the market a little bit later. Yeah, that's yeah. what we yeah. think. Uh, but, you know, we have to work at it. And uh, I think that we create some beautiful products and with, uh, as I said, a lot of cre creativity, but a lot of craftsmanship. And we have uh, such a legitimacy, about 160 years of existence, that, you know, people do remember that when, when they come to shop. They make their choices. Now, Five Live spent a day taking the temperature of the country recently, asking how people could tell that times were tough. I don't recall hearing anyone say that I've not been able to afford that second £16,000 watch I've always been wanting. You know, it's, it's not what you'd imagine people kind of gauge how, how, how wealthy they are. I'm talking, you know, the man on the street. Are the sort of people buying luxury brands like Cartier affected at all by the recession? I mean, are we talking a different breed of person? Yes, I mean, you know, we're talking about uh, luxury products. So, I mean, it's, it's, and I keep, you know, with, in target with the luxury, the people who want to buy luxury products. I mean, it's not unaffordable, but it's expensive. And, you know, it doesn't mean because it's expensive that uh, it's bad. Uh, now, this being said, <laughs> we, we, we look into the market because I don't think we're completely idiots and we look at the market and we see at all the young generations, all the people, and uh, we are coming with uh, products which are l more affordable, if I could say that, and more, you know, for, for young people. So uh, there are a lot like of what? watches, a lot of products, and some watches, for instance, that uh, will come at uh, uh, much less than what you just talked about. So what, what so and, you're, so and, you're you know, aiming? In, 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 uh, we're aiming at the, the younger people or people who want to make a gift 
uh, to beloved ones, and uh, they can afford and they can come to our stores and uh, and buy something, uh, you know, at a much more reasonable price than maybe they were before. They I were imagine able there are a lot of people who, in the kind of, you know, the, the, the throes of the huge economic kind of boom that we experience, buying uh, brands like yours, egged on by celebrity culture and things they've seen on television, often buying on credit cards, um, unable now to manage those debts. Um, those kind of people aren't buying anymore, are they? People that couldn't no, really afford it and thought they were going to pay for it one day. No, no, no. But we're not looking for those people either. I think it would be the wrong message. I mean, you know, so definitely we're aiming either at, you know, at a very rich clientele who uh, still will want to buy uh, some very uh, beautiful products and maybe less, but still will buy because there's still a demand for, for, for so the rich are still art, buying. creativity. And yes. But you don't want and any then, old rich person, do you? Because you're talking about the wrong kind of people. Katie Price, Jordan, was famously not allowed into the Cartier Polo last year and swore she'd never buy Cartier again. Has that made a difference to sales? <laughs> did she say that? <laughs> well, she did. First of all, she did. You know, you know, I, I, I never met Katie Price or, or well, Jordan, whatever her, her name in. is. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Yeah, she would come back through the window, sure. And that that I, I, I can, I am sure about that. But anyway, I, I never invited her because I don't know her. Right, and but she uh, bought a table, know, didn't she? she well, she, not, not, I mean, not in my marquee. In the marquee that uh, we have, where I invite, it's on by invitation only. Right. Have uh, between 600 and 700 people that are friends or customers of ours, or people that we know. Okay, so I try to invite people that I know. I unfortunately cannot invite the whole world. I mean, at times I wish I would because it's becoming so popular. But in in that instance, this woman, I, I don't know her, uh, and I don't even know what is her is real she, name. Is there, what is there put on the invitation? <laughs> Sorry. I, think it, I think it'd get to her. Um, Queen Katie of, of, of Sussex, I think she is, because yeah. she goes under now. Um, yeah, would, is, is, there a, is, there, <laughs> is there a certain kind of person that you want to be seen with? And, you know, they say no publicity is bad publicity. Kind of making a statement that you don't want someone like Katie Price wearing your brand, um, is that quite... No, a, no, 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 not at all, not no? at all. We, I, I don't, first of all, I want it to be recorded that I don't ban anybody. Uh, who, 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 whoever I, we are, I don't want to think that uh, people to think that we are banning anybody. Right. It's not at all our philosophy, and uh, we don't we, we don't act like this. So I'm not banning anybody at all. It's just that it's by invitation only, mm. and it's a day that, you know for our customers, for our friends, and hopefully for people to enjoy it and not not to start you know uh, on a negative point and saying oh what is Cartier so so it's not the case I mean on the contrary I want to make Cartier very affordable uh, available to everyone and for people to enjoy so, so who's there who's there this uh, year give us a little give see. us a little sample of the kind of the spread of celebrity that you're going to have this year well I don't know because until the last minute uh, I never know who's going to come what I can say is that, you know, it's not, it's not centered on celebrities. Okay. It's more centered on the sports itself. And what I want to say that, and, and that's quite important because we've been promoting the sport of polo for 25 years like nobody, no, no other company have. And I feel that uh, this is what something that I'm very proud of is that we, we promoted this wonderful sport mm. and that we show uh, two of the best teams worldwide playing together against each other this year that's why happens to be the people you invite yeah, you think that's why they accept the invitation do you think they're you know it's it's a it's a hugely glamorous event do you think they're all really interested in polo? no no it's, there's a combination obviously I, you're absolutely right by saying that they're not only coming to, to watch a polo but i i'm just saying that you know i'm promoting the pol the sport of polo as much as i can now it works because uh, there are a lot of bubbles. I mean, you know, a lot of uh, Cartier Champagne around. Uh, it works because uh, you have some members of the royal family, because you're on the Her Majesty grounds, because it's a wonderful day out, and uh, hopefully it's not going to rain again today. And uh, and it works because there are some fun people there. Is it value and, for money uh, for you? I mean, do you get, yeah, sure, do you get back course. what you put in? Well, it's not. I, I can't speak like that because uh, I don't know exactly uh, what I will get. But what I know is that there is an awareness 
uh, with and for Cartier, which is tremendous. And I can see that, you know, the interest that it's catching from all over the world, I mean, not only in England, but from all over the world, is tremendous. And that uh, that mm. you can uh, you really see. And uh, it's something important and uh, uh, something we've been building up over the past 25 years. And it's part of a long-term strategy, communication strategy, which uh, seems to work. Good. Well, have a fantastic day today and um, and enjoy your your guests who you won't reveal and your champagne. Um, yes. <laughs> well, uh, you understand why. I mean, you know, if they don't show, it will look silly, right? No, you won't look silly. We won't talk about it next week, I promise. Um, <laughs> thank you, Arno. Um, all right. Thank you very much. And I hope it will be a great day for all, all our guests and all the spectators. I'm sure. And I'm we, sure. we expect between 25 and 30,000 people. And if, if Katie Price so, happens to text or email the show, can she come? She shows up? Would you let her in? We- she, she can always come and see me, and I'm sure I will let her in. I mean, okay. don't worry, okay? okay? There's no problem there. Okay. No problem. Thank All right. You. Thank Bye. you, Arno. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome. Bye. Bye. Katie Price owes you one, Gabby. <laughs> he's going to get in now. What do you think he looks like? Did you build up an image in your mind with that amazing voice of what he's made? He's like a Persian cat on his lap and a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> he just had the perfect voice for his yeah. job, didn't he? Yeah. Um, are you not buying as much champagne and caviar and luxury watches and, and various other um, artefacts that, you know, well, I'm, I'm sort of up and coming artiste, aren't I? So I'm permanently uh, skin in. It's quite refreshing. I've got less than when I was working. But uh, yes, I mean, I've worked in, I sold Cartier for three years of my life and i worked in advertising for three years so uh i, I know for a fact that um that things do dip even in recession because um although th- these people are thinking in terms of 25 grand for their luxury item they'll cut they'll cut back on a few of their 25 grand mm. to save so instead, of, grand. instead of buying instead of buying at five or six um i've just and been and also, i've just been know? handed a, f- a photograph of <laughs> arno what does he look like he looks how he should look there you that. go would you he like looks, some more brie gabby he or looks about as suave as, oh, as, wow. a, as, as a man <laughs> can look in a suit uh, he's there with um, minor royalty. Um, <laughs> is that Edward the Seventh? Is the point then that these brands are kind of reassuringly expensive? That people are still buying. Well, he, I think what he was a deal as well is that the quality of your, the longevity of the mm. product. I suppose that helps, doesn't it? But as it's well? true. Brands like uh, Cartier and Ro- from my experience working in jewelry, brands like Cartier and Rolex, the handmade in-house, fully mm. Swiss-made watches, are the brands that decline less yeah. than the more transient fashion type labels. Don't name any, but they they take a more of a hit because they have a more superficial following. Yeah. Basically, mm. and they don't have the brand heritage and all that. What's the sport of kings? Horse racing, isn't it? No, that's the sport of the Queen. The future kings, that's Charles, Wills and Harry to you and me, Linz, uh, are much more interested in polo. And this weekend, polo goes to Windsor in the form of the Cartier International Polo. I'm joined in the studio by one of the sport's biggest stars, Australian polo captain Glenn Gilmore. Owen, give us more than two bars. Glenn, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Be, um, being an Aussie, OK, let's talk cricket. So, last week... now I'm joking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm only joking. Uh, now, um, you're, you are the Australian polo captain. Yes. Uh, I said in, to the, in the introduction, the future kings love it. Is it really a game for the likes of me and Lindsay? Yeah. I mean, look, polo uh, here in England is played by the royals. Um, we love having them involved. They play a lot, well, when they can. Um, unfortunately, Prince Charles doesn't play anymore. He's hurt his back. Um, but when I first came over 15 summers ago, he was playing. That's actually how I met my wife. She was working for Prince Charles, so um, doing the horses. And, um, yeah, it was great to play with and against them and have them around the sport. Did you ever play with Prince Charles? Yeah, a few times, yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Didn't you, didn't you give him a present or something? Uh, did yes, we, we did. Uh, well, last year we played each year England in the Cartier International that we're talking about. They play a different country. This year it's Argentina. And uh, last year they played against us as Australia, which was the second time we'd done that. We did uh, in 05 as well. And, um, yeah, I gave him a didgeridoo. Yeah, as you do, why not? But he left it. Do you like it? Do you teach him how to circle a breathe? Not quite, no. I'm not really sure how to do it myself. It was more about, there you go, what do you think of that sort of thing? Wow, good. Um, The Argentinians are pretty good at polo, aren't they? They're They're the best, yeah. They are the best? Yeah. How come? Um, Don't really know. I think it's sort of a product of their environment. Um, I think if uh, we always played golf with and against Tiger Woods or tennis with and against... Uh, Roger Federer, you'd end up with, you know, end up being really good at those sports. The Argentines have a lot of ten goalers, which is the highest handicap you can get to. Yeah. So Expe- explain that up. to us, because a lot of people don't. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, it's just four and a side, isn't there? Yeah, four and a side. But there is a handicap system like golf. Exactly. Can you explain that to us? Yeah. Well, um, different to golf, where the lower you are, the better you are. Polo, the higher you are, the better you are. So you start at minus.
minus two. When you come out to have a lesson with me, mate, you'll start yeah. on minus two. Yeah. And uh, you go up to minus ten. Ten, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's um, that's where you go. So you've got a twelve goal range that your handicap can go through. And um, on Sunday tomorrow, the uh, the game is a twenty six goal game because the English team has two sevens and two sixes. And, um, yeah, so the Argentine team has two tens, which is the highest in the world, and then they have two three-goal players playing with them. Oh. Mm. How much is it down to the quality of the horse? Very much. So about 85 90%. So um, it doesn't matter if, you know, Geffen and I are the same level playing. Yeah. If he's got a better horse than me, he's going to beat me to the ball and be the better player for the, for the game. Wow. Yeah. And that's interesting that the, there's a team of two tens and then England have gone for sort of the average. Uh, how does that work? Does that make for an interesting game? Yeah, it does, because obviously the English team's much more average, much more, um, you know, evenly spread, but, um, and the Argentines have thrown all their eggs into sort of the, you know, the, the middle with their two tens, but the English team, they are the four highest rated players in England, um, the two brothers, Luke and Mark Tomlinson, and then they have James Byam and uh, Malcolm Borick. So it's a good team, good even team. They've been playing together now for quite a number of years. Uh, we lost to them last year. I'm happy about that. But nothing we can do. And, um, yeah, they've been playing well. They've done really well. They've got themselves a good coach, fitness. Or everything's going really well. It's going good for them. So is this the elite competition for polo tomorrow, then? Um, yes, it is, especially for England. It's a real showcase day. 30,000 people come. It's a fantastic day. Wow. Um, yeah, it's great. Of playing out in front of the Queen or Prince, Prince Charles, whoever it was at the time. It's just a fantastic day to go out there put on your uh, your jersey for your country and get out there. You know, the old goosebumps are coming up now thinking yeah, about it. Yeah. So. You're not playing tomorrow, though, are you? No, because okay. England... Well, England play a different team each year. So in the morning, there's a um, there's a game at 11 o'clock with um, the best of the next generation of the English players coming through and uh, Prince uh, Harry's playing, I think, as well. Yeah. And then at 3 o'clock is the main game. So England play a different team each year. So this year's Argentina, so I didn't get to put my Argentine jersey on. Mm. Yeah, that is a shame. I can imagine you get it about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, wh- it's it seems like the game is is for posh people, for want of a better better yeah. word, in this country. Do you agree with that, or is it something that ev- everyone can get into? Because I mean, um, it looks like an incredibly exciting sport. It is. It's a great sport. I think it's the second fastest ball sport in the world. Mm. It's um, got the mix of four players on a team, the horses. You know, there's ten horses out on the ground at one time with two mounted umpires. It's a massive sized pitch. It's about Ten football football fields in in size, um, but as far as it being involved, you know, can everyone get involved? Yes, they can. Um, I'm a farmer's son from Queensland, and here I am playing, you know, in in um, in England. Uh, but it, polo is one of only two sports in the world where the person that owns the team can actually participate, and you can be good value for your handicap. So even though the person that owns the team might be on say zero or one goals, they can be really good value for that. And then they compete against, can compete against the best in the world and have them on their team. So is that what ha- what's happening tomorrow? The, no. the, the two, you've got three handicaps uh, are on the team and they've sort of fought the, uh, quite. the rings no. in all No, they're the, they're the ringers. They're the, the young sort of hired guns to come in with the, with the two tens. They're the best three goalers that they could find in, the, in Argentina and they brought them over to try and, to try and win the Cartier Cup. So. Yeah. Are you injured at the moment, Glenn? Or you, no. Because you, you, you got injured, didn't you, playing polo? Mm. And, and like some people might think that polo is a, is a weird sport. Um, you thought darts was a weird sport. Yes. You got into that when you were injured, didn't you? Exactly. Yeah, and I fell off and I uh, spread my pelvis, which wasn't a whole lot of fun. No. Um, but I uh, sat in, uh, in the hospital in Wexham, sitting there sort of three in the morning. Yeah, this is quite boring. And then, of course, the darts came on and... Phil the Power Tail is now my new hero in the darts. Yes, <laughs> like everyone else. <laughs> Loving that. Exactly, so I can't wait to go and see a game of darts somewhere. Are you going to do that? I don't know, I suppose I have to. Yeah. Uh, what other weird sports did you get into when you were... Oh, mate, sitting there, watching, it's amazing what comes on at three in the morning on Sky Sports, I tell you. Yeah, yeah. so, no. It, yeah, there was all sorts. Mount, Downton, uh, what do you call it? Mountain, uh, downhill, downhill biking yeah. and all yeah. those sort of things. It was crazy. Um, so, uh, b- back to tomorrow. Obviously, an, an exciting day. You, you'll be there commentating. Who, who's favourite to win tomorrow? I think with those two players, uh, Adolfo Cambiasso and uh, Facundo Pérez, who just played against each other in the Gold Cup, which is the biggest patron oriented orientated tournament in England, mm. um, down at Cowdery. Uh, Facundo Pérez won that uh, against Adolfo. They'll be playing together. They'd have to be favourites, I think, with the two tens, two best players. But the English team's a very good, evenly balanced team, well-mounted and well-drilled. I think it'll be a really good game. 
I've seen lots of pictures of these, th- this particular event before in, in my little magazines and mm. things that I read. It really does attract lots of celebrities and Very glamorous so. people, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a bit like the racing at Ascot, isn't mm. it? It's exactly, yeah. Glamorous. It's, it's sort of the new way for people to go and have some fun and enjoy themselves. And um, with what we do, I've met a few of the celebs and sort of said, well, do you want to come and have, you know, come play some polo and whatever? And they said, like, do you think we can? I said, like, come get on a horse, try it, yeah. see what you think. And everyone has a go and they just hook. They just well, like Sarah Harding from Girls Aloud did that. They actually filmed mm. a, a programme about her didn't they because she was going to the polo and she actually went to Argentina to try and learn how to play it yeah Yeah. well well, another um, well known um, figure in in Britain Katie Price she's a big polo fan now is this the competition she couldn't get into last year do you know anything about that no I mean I was just at uh, the Duke of Essex Cup a few weekends ago and I commentated that day and Katie was there and uh, yeah it was a great day it was a fantastic day she's supposed to be quite handy as well isn't she Uh, yeah well she rides really well which is a massive start um, because if you um, you know your horse control is so important and then you can learn to hit the ball from there. So if you're a good rider in the first place, you know, you've got a massive jump ahead of someone that hasn't ridden a lot. So. She set up her own competition, didn't she? And I think the rules are mini skirts and pink stilettos. <sighs> Glenn, you've been invited? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Got the new mini skirt ready, so I'm away. <laughs> yeah, you're in there, are you? Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, enjoy tomorrow. Thank you. It sounds incredibly exciting. Um, I'm definitely going to come along when I get a chance to sure. see some polo. Uh, as long as you don't get me on the back of the horse. I'm just coming to watch, enjoy yeah. myself and relax, OK? You've got to have a go, surely. The, OK, I'm in. Good. Uh, Glenn Gilmore, <laughs> Australian polo. Polo captain, thank you so much for joining us.